Good evening guys! As I promised today, I was actually gonna try to show you guys what can you do to your Sprinter van to properly maintain it uh, and basically like save like $900 from actually a part, you know, like not to break on you, you know, for you to service it. All you pretty much need for this is a screwdriver. This is mine. It's been with me for, I don't know, like probably like 20 years. Um, so let me show you exactly what you gotta do. But before we get to it, I actually want to explain uh, what it is that I did want to share with you guys. I didn't want to say it in that video because it's, you know, it's a new, it's a like, you know, that video. Uh, so like in this one, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about the front uh, bearings on sprinters, okay? Uh, maybe some of you guys never had a fail, you know, a failure before with them, but some of you guys that did have a failure, you kind of like know what I'm talking about and the pain that you went through to actually get it fixed. Because of the front if the front bearings fail on you, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to heat things up and basically just mess up that whole unit. I'm not sure what the name of it is, um, but you're going to need to buy basically pretty much new bearings and a new piece because it's going to be like all melted where it actually goes into. Probably called like a wheel hub or something, that's probably what I would call it. Might as well just make up another name like I always do and call it a wheel hub that's probably what it's called <laughs> so um oh yeah you might notice maybe quality is a little bit better i'm not sure um i did i am like recording this on my sony camcorder i have like a little remote for it so it's kind of like nicer i could just press record and start recording um you know last video was like with an iphone and i'm really sorry you know that video um i shot it pretty much at night because uh, i wanted to upload it during night and then it failed and then i tried to like re-upload like three times i don't know what the heck was going on with the thing and you know in the end uh half, half of the video like the sound is horrible and the video is like paused and i don't know like what happened there so i'm really sorry about that so anyways what you need to do to your bearings is um basically you know they supposed to have grease and sometimes it's very little grease so you got to pack some more grease in there so um, let me show you exactly how to do it you know and just you know I don't want to waste your time so here we go okay guys what you're looking at here is pretty much my wheel and there's like a little center portion here I don't have any like plastic hopcaps I do have them but I removed them I don't have them on here anymore um, they're kind of like for the looks anyways. But basically what you're gonna need to do is remove this little metal piece here, okay? This is where your bearings are. So what you do is you just uh, go with a screwdriver and uh, try to like like press it out. It's very easy to do. You could just uh, use your rim, you know, to get some slack and there you go. I popped it off. So you might see like I got some grease over here and stuff right on it. It's kind of kind of black looking and I really don't want to touch it I have like no gloves on pretty much but I I will uh, let me see if I could get it in focus there it is so basically what you would want to do is just put some put some grease inside over here okay back it with some grease and stick it back and by doing that, you're gonna supply, you know, extra grease that it needs and just kind of like packs itself. But it looks like it's pretty good right now. I won't be packing it with any more grease, you know, but you do want to check it because if you have um, one that you open it up and it's kind of dry, you know, definitely put some in there because if it's dry, it's gonna basically fail on you. So you don't want that to happen. So we're gonna stick that right back in there. You could just tap on it like that. Actually, it looks like it's, it did not really go on there. It's too straight. You want to make sure you're putting it straight. There you go. You want to make sure it seals it really nice um, around the rim over here because mine kind of went at an angle and, you know. So I checked my driver's side, now we're on the passenger side. So I'm going to try to pop, pop this one open and we're going to see if there's anything, um, you know, any breach back there. 
just work it out like this. It's very easy to do, you know, and you can basically avoid $900 problem. I had friends that basically just failed on them. And I've been driving this Sprinter already. It's got a million, 66,000, and mine never failed. So, there you go. I don't know if you can see that. It does look like it needs uh, some more grease to be packed in there, but um, it's not dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pop this back. I really wasn't, uh, you know, doing this service just yet, so they're still fine. But once I get home, I will actually pack it up nice and tight with, with grease. So anyways guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Um, it is really short, simple, but that's what it is about. It's about actually making it simple, accessible, so you guys could just go ahead and, you know, pop those little leads open, pack, pack some grease in there, and then at least not have to worry about, you know, the front bearings going out. Now, it doesn't guarantee your bearings from going out. I mean, if they're gonna go out, they're gonna go out, but this will cause them to basically last much longer, okay? Just by doing that little simple trick, you know, and uh, that's what I've been doing, and I think uh, maybe this is why my bearings have lasted me for such a long time. I mean, I always do have this little thought in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, bearings are next, bearings are next. They're probably gonna feel next. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys probably have that feeling with other things, uh, thinking something else is gonna fail pretty soon. And that's the way I've been driving the Sprinter, man. Like, ever since I got it, it was like 650,000 miles. I'm thinking, okay, what's gonna break next? What's gonna break next? Because I had so many failures, so many failures, like with the, basically like all these external parts in the engine, they were just failing, failing, failing. I constantly have to fix it, fix it. It was tiring. Uh, you know, I don't mind so much like fixing, but every time it happens, it's at night, it is freezing out. Man, I had to like work sometime like from 2, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. just trying to, you know, like repair like my high pressure fuel pump failing at night. I had diesel pouring all out of there. Man, you know, some crazy, crazy, crazy times, you know, with my Sprinter. You know, some of them, they're like stressed, they're like, oh, come on, you know, uh, because, you know, you're trying to get that load delivered and, you know, and just, just you know. But uh, sometimes the Sprinter, they just don't leave you alone. This is why I make this channel, so you guys will avoid those problems that I had and at least to try to show you different things that you could do to actually have a, you know, like some preventive maintenance going, you know, so like you could spend like less money on the Sprinter. and maybe spend money on something you do like or want um, so my next video I'm gonna try to probably shoot it today uh, remember guys like in the morning I shared with you like basically it was like one o'clock in the morning I made a video with my iPhone which was an iPhone 4 it's one of my older iPhones I haven't bought, a, bought an iPhone since it's still a good iPhone um, for what it was it was basically like Steve Jobs like last iPhone I think you know uh, but basically that video is like it's horrible I mean it's nighttime I mean what can you expect I just had an interior light that was on and you know I looked all yellow and stuff on the video uh, but basically I want to make a video one of you guys um, made a suggestion uh, to me um, basically it was by a guy that's named King Hammurabi uh, he said that maybe I should just uh, scan uh, the computer and find out what the codes are. I'm thinking, why didn't I think of that? Because usually I'm working on the Sprinter without really looking at the computer codes first, but I'm kind of like doing like educated guesses as to what exactly is going on. So when my engine shut off last night, like about like, I don't know, like 12, 30 ish, you know, I only had like about like 20 more miles to make it to my destination and drop it off after driving for that past like 750 miles. You know, when it shut off, it kind of scared me because I'm thinking, what now? You know, like this engine is still kind of fresh. It's only got like just a little over 200,000 miles on it um, because that was a brand new engine that I installed. Uh, well, I didn't install it. I bought it and the Mercedes installed it for me. I let them install it due to the warranty and, you know, it was like 50,000 miles. So I thought, why not? Just let them install it. Um, so when the engine shut off, maybe it threw a code, okay? And I'm hoping it's a high pressure, I mean, uh, yeah, not, not a high pressure fuel pump. Um, I'm hoping it's fuel filter. It's 
good possibility. Now, uh, King Hammurabi suggested it's probably like a wiring harness. Now, I had that issue in the past where the wiring harness that's, well, I, I'm not sure which one he's referring to, but the one that's uh, behind your steer, steering wheel, the one where you're sitting right there, you got the fuse panel box. Um, when you pull, the, pull it off, all that little system with the fuse panel and everything behind it you got everything that's going in like ignition wires and everything else is plugging in there now in the past I had one of those uh, wires that was like loose and every time I hit a bump it basically I guess got like looser and uh, like loses contact and shuts my vehicle off but that was like, like at slow speeds like at high speeds it would basically just the lights would come on but the sprinter would basically still be on um, last night situation it was much different you know uh, the engine just shut off and it was like no power like there's just no gas and I keep turning key back and forward while I'm driving and it does not come on usually if you turn your van off while you're driving because you would maybe have like some kind of like limp mode situation on the mountains you can just quickly turn it off have all the rpm gauges drop turn it back on again and you know it just turns out like no problem you can just keep going including with a high pressure fuel pump I mean not a high pressure fuel pump excuse me uh, fuel filter now if the fuel filter is kind of getting like clogged a little bit you know like when it's just getting ready to go out sometimes it causes like a loss of power like in your pedal uh, like in your gas pedal like as you press it like you feel that I mean the vehicles on but it's just barely pulling and it's constant losing you know like rpms like it just keeps going down like your speed just going down 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 and then you could twist the key back turn it on and basically get it kind of going again get it kind of going again now that situation was way different uh, last night. I mean, I could not get it to turn on for like nothing. It would not reset. So I thought I was in basically in trouble uh, having to figure out what else is going to be like next with a, you know, with a sprinter. But luckily, I pulled over to the side, turned my, basically I turned the key back. I just, you know, I parked it and everything. And then I started it up and it started out just fine. And then I drove fine for the next uh, 20 miles and uh, came to my delivery place. Um, and I was okay so now I'm kind of wondering you know what is it so I'm gonna go there right now and uh, I'm gonna check the the check engine light type of deal and I'm gonna make another recording I'll probably have to explain all this stuff all over again uh, to other people that maybe haven't seen this video or maybe they're not following but um, you know thank you guys so much for watching my videos I do this for you guys okay and uh, for all my subscribers thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos um, right now currently there's about uh, like 1400 people that watch my videos like uh, every 24 hours that's a lot of people I mean I wish I did something right to where they would subscribe it would make me feel good even though like maybe they would not be back to watch any more videos um, at least I would feel good that I won over subscribers uh, because I want to build an audience that way I could feel that I'm speaking to an audience and I could better help people you know understand their sprinters and make videos like this uh, I know this is a simple one but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be like a lot more videos it's gonna be like very detailed and very much into it um, you know before I go I do want to explain I mean I have upcoming projects that's got, that I want to actually tackle um, I'm going to be trying to rebuild uh, rear differential on one of my sprinters um, you know also I want to show you guys another little part that it basically causes ESP, ASR, and uh, ABS lights to come on. What it could do basically, it could basically like cause your vehicle like not to shift. I want to show you the part that actually causes that problem to happen. Um, it, it's not it's not always the ABS sensor, so um, I could show you where that part is located, what the name of it is, um, and basically I have like another project. I gotta rebuild uh, basically uh, another sprinter that I have the engine. Uh, you know I'm gonna basically get into everything you got to do to it because I got to do the head gasket but I'm gonna do the complete job the right way so that's coming up but as I travel and stuff to keep you guys uh, entertained I'm gonna try to make some vlogging videos and also like some advice videos and answering your question type of videos you know like video replies and stuff um, you know to basically you know keep videos coming uh, and you know hopefully they're gonna be like good content for you guys to watch and uh, yeah like uh, some of the vlogs that I want to do is me traveling because I do visit a lot of interesting places and now I'm beginning to think okay like what is interesting in this particular state or this particular city uh, what can I visit that would be like unique and interesting because not a lot of people get to travel for a living um, luckily 
you know, I get paid already to travel, so that's like no big issue for me. I can just go and, um, you know, go somewhere that's fun. I want to visit car shows. I do want to go like, and, like to the different type of events. It could be like technological events or, you know, like whatever. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff is going to be coming up. So anyways, if you watched the video this long, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this long. I know like I'm blabbling about stuff. Um, Please subscribe uh, to my channel if you guys uh, haven't already. Um, I believe it is going to be a good idea to subscribe because, you know, this is going to be a really informative type of, uh, you know, channel uh, for you guys. Not only with sprinters, but also with technology and other things. Because in the future, I will basically have like so much more that you guys are going to get to enjoy. And every time I add something new to the channel, I will organize it nicely in a way, that way you're not gonna be confused what channel are you really on or where the information is that you're used to finding. So I always try to make it to where it's in tune with what I'm doing. Uh, but anyways, God bless you guys, uh, take care. Um, have a good night or a good morning to some of you guys. And uh, see you in my next video.